What are you making of um? What are you making of your gaffer, bro? Like, do you know what I mean? He seems to be going under the radar. Do you know what I mean? You've been able to look at him up close. Yeah. Like, now, how do you how do you feel about what he's doing? Because it seems like no matter who he sells and that, he's still keeping um he's still keeping a consistent position in the Premier League, bro. Like yeah. he sold Maguire for big money, yeah. he sold yeah. Chilwell. People think, oh, they're selling their best players, they're better players, they're gonna dip. And bro, like you seem to just be either getting stronger or maintaining strength. And that's testament to the the manager, the replacements they've brought in and also like what your manager's doing. I don't think they let their players go straight away without actually having the planning process before it even happens. Some yeah. clubs like look at the money and go, oh, wow, that's a lot of money. Quick, t go, off you go. And then they just panic buy some shit. I think Leicester kind of prepare I mean, I can imagine already preparing for like, you know, maybe your James Madison as well. At some point, they're going to prepare for that. Um, I, their academy is insane too. I think we turned United over last night. I think we won 4-2 against United's under-23s. Yeah, our under-23s are shit. I think they, I think oh, they, they were looking gone. to get, I think they were looking yeah. to get relegated if they didn't get relegated, I swear. Leicester's under-23s are, 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 they play some solid stuff. Uh, but Brendan Rodgers, uh, he's changed the way that we play. He's very fast football now. Uh, under Claw Puel, before him, it was it just went backwards. It went so slow, side to yeah. side. There was there was no urgency to get the ball in a box, nothing. Jamie Vardy, I think, had the lowest amount of goals he's ever scored under Claw Puel in, at, at Leicester. Um, but Brendan Rodgers has come in and the fair play to Claw Puel, he, he did get one thing, which was changing us from counter-attacking only to more of a possession-based. But Brendan Which is Rodgers, what we need to do. We, yeah. That's what exactly what we need. But Brennan Rodgers has now kind of put both into play, depending on who we play. If we play the bigger sides, we go more into our old school counter-attacking. If we play some of the smaller sides, we tend to try and to play the ball fast, you know, across the floor. Get it. So it's, it's good. It's got, he's finally found a, a plan, kind of a plan B, which is not using Vardy all the time, but using Harvey Barnes' his, his, his speed and down the left and James Madison's technical ability in the middle. It's, uh, it's good to see. Hmm. Absolutely. And this guy's saying here that um again, like when the top jobs come up, no one's mentioning Brendan, bro. And that's testament to um just how under the radar what you lot doing is right now, bro. It's madness. And I think but, people forget, yeah, that he did well at Liverpool as well. He was there too early. That's yeah. All. That's all. yeah. It was his early early part of his career. And uh, and again, he gets called a bottle job, mate. But was it his fault that Steven Gerrard slipped? No, it wasn't. It would be a Premier League winner if Gerald hadn't slipped. It's end of end of discussion. That's it. I mean, the man was on a treble treble at Celtic. I know it's, it's Celtic, and I know you, people banter. Bro, you still got to do it, bro. Yeah. Celtic ain't doing a treble treble right now, bro. Exactly. Steven Gerrard's running away with the thing. Exactly. So he's clearly a good manager. I, I don't mm. give a shit what people say. He's definitely a good manager, and I think he probably will end up leaving Leicester for a big job. The, the, I don't think there's no loyalty in him because what he's done with Celtic to Leicester. Yeah, it just literally dropped on. Like, but he had to. It was a bigger team, innit? It was a bigger team. It was a bigger opportunity, and so far, tell Chris Sutton that Celtic reserves are bigger than Leicester City. Yeah, but come on, Chris Sutton can say whatever the hell he wants, innit? Stone Let's be cold. honest. Ted so fuck you, you prick. <laughs> but, but that's it, bro. Like, honestly, you can say whatever he wants. That like, the truth of the matter is, yeah. Like, cool. Celtic are historically a big club. Um, yeah, of course. They're, they're bigger. Than, they're, they're bigger than just the football club in in Scotland, and obviously, like in in um in Ireland as well. Cool. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, there's like political things tied to the clubs, and that we get it. But in the cold light of day, yeah. No, it's it's Leicester all day. Like it's an easy decision to make. It's an easy decision to make, man. He's as got, as he's got loads to play with. He's got owners that actually care about the club that they own mm. and believe it or not that exists that you know that they give a toss about the city that they're actually in as well uh and then you've got the fact that they they back rogers they'll back the manager they will they'll, they'll provide yeah. the money they'll provide everything that you need to get the job done which is happening you would i've already told you on the last show 80 million pound Maguire money where did it go rants yeah exactly state of the art and it looks flipping different gravy as well and that's what you want. It's not a, not just it's not just about let's let's buy someone now that eighty million pounds. It's about investing in the club's future. 
It's a different class, mate. Owners are unreal. They've changed this club from close to being gone. We were in administration in 2008, I think it was. We were out yeah. the door. Emil Heskin, Gary Lineker funded some money together to keep this flipping club afloat. That's you mad. Know? I didn't even know that. There you go. That's massive. I did not even know that. Yeah. I think I it was about 2007, 2008-ish. I can't remember the year exactly, but we was close to going under. Flip sake. And we've won three tiers of football since then. League but one. that's what I mean. I remember when you were coming through the leagues. I no. remember when you were coming through the leagues with Sven and that. And, yeah. you, and I remember when you were signing players and when you signed Beckford and, and them and like that was a madness. <laughs> Jermaine Beckford, what a what a player. Well, he's yeah. a proper gunman, bruv. Do you know what yeah. I mean? He's a proper goal scorer. Like, I don't know why he didn't get the opportunity in the Prem. I, I, I have a feeling it must have been injuries and stuff, but I think so too. What a flipping striker, bruv. Like, what a finisher at every level, like from like non league level all the way through. It was similar to like the Vardy story. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The way he was just coming through the leagues and just banging goals and then. Yeah, man, he ended up at Everton and that. He just didn't really get the chance there, man. And I have a feeling it was injuries, but he was one hell of a finisher, bro.